New this morning, Iran is demanding answers amid an escalating spat with Pakistan. Overnight, Pakistan launched retaliatory strikes on targets in southeastern Iran, just across their shared border. Pakistan claims it took out a number of militants, but Iran says mostly women and children were killed. This is coming just a day after Iran said it fired missiles and drones at militant strongholds inside Pakistan. Local officials say two children were killed there. CNN's Ivan Watson is following all of these details for us. Uh, Ivan, these really are, um, and this is an extraordinary moment with Pakistan and Iran launching strikes against each other. What does it mean for the region? Well, I think it just underscores, Sarah, how volatile the Middle East and Central Asia are right now, because even 48 hours ago, you couldn't have imagined these two neighbors getting into this tit-for-tat, deadly cross-border missile strike uh, situation, because the... Prime Minister of Pakistan was meeting with the foreign minister of Iran in Davos on Tuesday. The uh, two navies, they were conducting joint naval exercises at the beginning of this week. And then out of nowhere, the Iranians fire these missiles into Pakistani territory, saying they're hitting militants who've carried out attacks inside Iran in the past. And it totally shocks the Pakistani ruling establishment, which calls it uh, uh, basically a, a disruption of Pakistan sovereignty, says at least two children were killed in the strikes, and there are calls for retaliation. And that's what a number of hours ago the Pakistani military uh, basically claimed responsibility for, saying that uh, it fired, quote, killer drones, rockets, loitering munitions, and standoff weapons into Iranian territory after targets that it claimed were uh, ethnic Baluch separatist militants who they accuse of having uh, operated from a across this very long and porous border. Uh, so it's a messy situation. Uh, the Pakistanis seem to be leaving the door open to some kind of de-escalation right now. And the ball does appear to be in Iran's court, though Pakistan has withdrawn its ambassador from Tehran. And it has said that Iran's ambassador ambassador to, to the Pakistani capital is not really welcome at this time. So this really is a diplomatic crisis between these two neighbors who basically didn't have any beef more than 48 hours ago. Yeah, I mean, it is extremely troubling and extremely rare. Uh, I don't know that we've seen this in our <laughs> lifetimes. And thank you for clarifying that we are talking about Central Asia uh, as well. A lot of people think that um, Pakistan is the Middle East. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ivan. Uh, John, um, this makes me really fearful of a, a huge conflagration. Look, there's the a area. lot going on here. This is the location uh, of the Pakistani strike inside Iran, and you can see some of the aftermath right there uh, of what took place. Uh, this is the video. This is the Pakistani strike inside Iran, and then the Iranian strike inside Pakistan was about here. With us now to discuss is retired General Peter Zwack. He is a global fellow at the Wilson Center and served as U.S. Senior Defense Attaché to the Russian Federation. Again, Pakistan is a nuclear power general. Iran, frankly, about to be a nuclear power. An exchange of fire back and forth here. What's the U.S. interest in this? Well, the U.S. interest in this is, is tremendous. Obviously, we will... Um, we will watch closely. Um, our diplomats certainly are working behind the scenes, um, certainly with Pakistan. Remember, Pakistan and India had a near miss, potentially nuclear-wise, in 2019. Uh, but when you look, John, at the whole aggregate of the Middle East and now Central Asia, from from uh, from the from the Mediterranean all the way to Iran. Pakistan, Baluchistan, almost the Afghan border, and then and then strikes and hits in Beirut, in in Damascus, um, in uh, Kerman, in in uh, in uh, Iran near uh, near the Pakistani border, and now you have Pakistan and and, and um, Iran. Yeah, this is really really dangerous. Not to mention Yemen and the ongoing ongoing um, uh, horror. Uh, in, uh, in Gaza. Well, you talked about Yemen. Let's take a look um, at what the U.S. continues to do. The U.S. continues to try to strike Houthi targets inside Yemen. These are just some 
of the locations that have been hit. Four rounds of attacks now. The U.S. continues to say it doesn't seek a wider conflict, but four rounds of attacks, General, isn't it already a wider conflict? It already is a, a, a wider, if you will, but a round of conflict. But um, you, we can see that the U.S. and the allied um, targeteers assisting them have been careful and measured in what they hit. They're still going in after installations. Mm -hmm. They're going after the anti-ship missile launching sites and drone locations. So it's been measured in that way. Yet the Houthis go out. They've hit a couple of container ships recently, including a U.S. flag one. And I worry that one that a lot of and you have a lot of stuff flying in the air. Uh, something eventually hits. And what happens when one of those missiles hits a U U.S. or coalition um, ship? or entity or base and people are killed in this level of tension all around that I've described in the whole uh, Middle East and uh, in now Central Asia. It sounds like you're saying the U.S. attacks so far have not been much of a deterrent on the Houthis. Um, it seems, uh, well, the Houthis are, are hard, they're stubborn. They went through a tough war with the Saudis and UAE. Uh, just 10 years ago and fought a moment to a standstill um, uh, and they're not going to they're not going to relent and and it looks like they're getting encouragement um, from their partners um, Iran could tell them to stop and while the Houthis have their own mind they they probably would 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 slow down but they're not getting that guidance from Iran and other nations bigger nations why doesn't Russia put pressure on Iran to put pressure on the Houthis to knock it off if they really, really believe there should be peace in the region? Well, uh, no, this is hard. Yeah, it is. One possible reason for that is conflict in this region right here takes eyes off of what is happening in Ukraine up there, and Russia might be benefiting from all of this. General Peterswak, thank you so much for being with us.